Hi. So today I'm taking my driver's test. I'm nervous. I'm 20. Uh, long, long time in coming. And I'm praying for faith. Why did I just say that? I'm praying that the Lord will be faithful and help me to pass because it is the Lord that's going to do this, not myself. So let's go. This is my outfit, by the way. Hold on, is it recording yet? Yes. It's recording already? Or do I have to hit the record button? Do I have to hit the button? Alright, you're good. Okay, pause. So, I thought it was really interesting how they made me take the picture before I had to go take the test. And then after this, they end up taking me to take the test and drive because it's like if you show up to the DMV, that means you know how to drive. I trust that you know how to do it. So I'm gonna take your picture and that way when you're done, all, all I have to do is print it out. But I thought it was interesting because first of all, it gets my hopes up because it's like, oh my gosh, my picture's in the system. I actually have to pass now. Otherwise, man, I'm gonna be crushed. And secondly, it reminded me a lot of like our faith. Like we say we're a Christian and we believe in God and we love Jesus. So that means our pictures are in the system and God holds us to that. Okay, you are a Christian and people hold us to that. And we should hold ourselves to that, right? But then when our faith is tested and we have to actually go out and exercise that, now you get to prove that, you know, you're worthy of this title and of this calling because it's like, you're a Christian, you said this, and, you know, the Lord believes us and he sees us as those things, but we have to let our faith talk and actually prove it in our actions. Like, and in the end, he gives us this prize and says, here you go. You were faithful, you were good, and you, sh you proved it when you were put to the test. In the same way, the licensed people, they're going to watch me and see if I actually know what I'm doing. And then when I'm done, they're going to be like, good job. You actually know how to drive. You're responsible and take on the roads. Here you go. Here's your license. Okay, resume. Did you change your address as well? What is that? Yes, I have a new address. You gave me the camera talking about embarrassing me. Record me. Oh, no, stop. <laughs> I just want the picture. <laughs> Am I good? Are they both going in the car with me? Or It'll just be me and you in the car when you take the test. Okay. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good quality. Well, thank you. It's back to the norm. It's back to the norm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm praying the Lord will be with me. That's It'll the first fine. I read this morning. Okay, come on. Vehicular freedom coming right up. Freedom. Hi. Let's hope your teaching work. Yeah, you're teaching. You're teaching. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not you right. taught me the point turn, and I'm so good at it now. Right. You should have looked up the. Look, look, uh, look. Your I hope you're teaching your teaching work. <laughs> So first I'm going to go over automatic failures, so that's any traffic law violation, any dangerous act or behavior, cause of an accident, or failure to understand the follow directions. The seasons are changing from fall to winter, and I'm changing from old me to new me. And it hurts when you have to go through change. I'm not sure how the leaves feel that they have to fall off from the branches, and then they have to deal with frostbites, but I know that me shifting 
from the worldly version of me in the one, the version of me that I created, shifting from that to who God wants me to be has been nothing short of painful. And I'm okay with that because it's a beautiful process. In this next part of me growing and changing, I had to make a very hard, grown up, mature, faith driven decision, and that was to quit my job. Why would you quit, Yodeline? That's a good question. I quit because I felt like the Lord wanted me to. No, actually, I quit because I know the Lord wanted me to. If you don't know what I did for work, I customized Air Force Ones. I'd put trendy designs on them and things that I loved um, and do art on them. So like butterflies, cow prints, pastel colors and patterns. And none of that stuff is bad or evil, but it is bad when it's based on the trends that I know that the Lord is wanting me to not identify with or not find identity in. And so because I'm beginning to indict those things and preach against them, I felt such deep conviction to be working and having a business completely based on that. And to ignore that would be disobeying the Lord. And so I had to quit doing it as he gave me grace to quit doing it. So basically this month I had all these orders to finish. So because everyone placed their orders, I decided I'm going to finish as quickly as possible and then what the Lord ended up doing is he put this thought in my mind like why don't you try this instead why don't you use the talents that I've given you art and use it for my kingdom in a different way actually here here's an idea and he just gave me an idea and so as I worked really hard got all the shoes done packaged them ready to move forward it took weeks but I worked diligently to get it done. I started doing research about this new idea because one day I'm just sitting and playing the song from my friend, younger friend from church, that she made, and it goes like, You are the potter, and I am the clay, I follow each step you take. I listen to the lyric that says, You're the potter, I'm the clay, and I'll follow each step you make me take. No matter what happens to me, I know that you're worth worthy. Basically, like, I had this epiphany, like, God is the potter. I am the clay. We are the clay. He molds us and shapes us. And the reason it hurts is because he has to change us from one state to another. And that's perfectly okay. But wow, Lord Potter, you're a potter. I'd love to do to be a potter. Like I would love to make things. I'd love to paint on ceramics and do things like that. And I was like, why don't you? I felt the Lord like, why don't you? You should do it. And so then next thing you know, I began looking up pottery, looking into it, and following this unction from the Holy Spirit, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna do this. So I did lots of research, then all of the money that I earned from doing shoes, I used all of that. Like, this was truly a faith decision, because all that I had, I spent it and I bought a kiln, which is the thing that you put the pottery in once you make a mug, so that it can become usable for you to drink from it or to eat out of them and so I purchased it on faith literally on faith like I spent on it because I was like Lord I think you want me to do this no I don't think I know you want me to do this and so I made that faith decision and that was a very hard thing to do and letting go of shoes and the amount of investment I did into the account and all these things I let it go and I felt layers come off and I felt doors shut like the enemy no longer has access to me through that stuff and I'm no longer bound to an old version of myself anymore and if the Lord wants me to preach against trends or different things like that I can do it because I'm not associated with it anymore and so that's what happened and it was wonderful it is wonderful